You are listening to an exclusive interview on Bass Musician Magazine. The interview starts now. Hey everybody, this is Raul for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the great honor and pleasure of chatting with bassist David Pastorius, coming to us directly from sunshiny Florida. Here, we're in the very cloudy and gloomy Northwest, so I'm, I'm envious of that lovely weather, yeah. David. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice out here right now. Oh, man. So, kind of starting from the beginning, I know everybody is, is always relates with your name, your Jocko's nephew. But you're certainly very much your own musician. You've had your own journey over this. So I always like to kind of put the emphasis on that. Tell us a little bit. How did you get started in bass? It's funny because I never really paid all that much attention to the whole Jocko thing when I was young. I knew I had a famous uncle that played music, and I knew he played a bass. But I didn't even know what a bass looked like. I didn't know if it was the one with four or six strings. I used to say, you know, I, you know, I, that's how much I knew back then. So when I was about 15, I happened to be friends with my buddy, his name was Sam Griffith. I went to his house after school one day, and he picked up a bass and started playing the intro. I uh, know the uh, the Chili Pepper version of Higher Ground. Mm -hmm. You know, the slap part on that. And I and I was like, man, that sounds awesome. What instrument is that? And he's like, it's a bass, you dummy. That's what your uncle played. And I was like, but I was like, wow. But that, but that, him playing the slap, that just that little slap flea thing, that's what sold me. And from then on, I was like, man, I want to play bass. And that's what got me started. And originally, like when I started playing, my heroes were guys like you know Flea, Robert Trujillo, Steve Harris, you know, kind of like metal punk rock kind of players. So that was, and, and I'm glad that's kind of where I came from. Of course, I listened to Jocko, and Jocko was amazing and man, but I'm, I'm kind of glad I got to come at it from a different angle. That's basically what got me started. How did you go about developing and, and learning music? Just loving it, because I was so into it. Like, I mean, I was like, when I started playing for like the first couple of years, you know, I was doing the whole, probably playing like five, six hours a day, because I just loved doing it. That's all I wanted to do was play bass. And, I remember having to, you know, going to stores and pick up all the guitar player magazines and looking at the tablature and, you know, trying to learn stuff and just learning everything I could. But it's definitely just a lot of sitting in my room and playing. That's that's pretty much what did it. Right now, I know you're very active down in in Florida. You're playing with Local 518 and Pat Travers Band. Yeah, Local 518 is my original band, and I've been playing with uh, Pat Travers for about two years now, and that's a great gig. Pat Travers is an amazing, legendary guitarist, and I'm like, I'm, it's like an honor to play with that guy. And he's so open-minded musically, too, and he's so cool. But yeah, so mainly right now, as far as me gigging out, it's with Pat Travers though, right now. Right now, we're recording with Local 518, plus I'm recording my own album, like my own personal solo, solo album right now. That's what I'm doing at the studio today. At my buddy's studio, Studio 101 here in Melbourne, Florida. Nice. Tell us a little about the this project, this album that you're working on. What What's kind of the thrust? It, you said it's it's solo, it's all you? It's all my music. I got basses. It's funny because I usually write like music all on the bass, but that's like I'll come up with a bass line, then I'll come up with the chords and, you know, like a melody all on bass. But then when I finally get into the studio, I'll get a guitar player to play his part and I'll show him the parts. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the way I put the songs together. But yeah, it's really it's really good. I've heard I've heard people that have heard some of my stuff. I've been told like you know like market it towards like video games or movies or stuff like that. I would love to get into that. That's a market I would love to get into. No, it's hard to do, but that would be great. What is your projected release date? I know it's probably a little early to say because you're at the studio right now. Yeah, I've been in the studio. This is probably like I started recording it probably like two weeks ago, but it's going really quick. Right now, I'm almost finished up with bass tracks already. Then the next step will be to bring in drums and you know get the ground laid down. Because what I did is I just recorded my bass to a click, recorded everything to a click track at first, all my stuff, and then I'll get a drummer to come in and then build from there. It's going pretty quick. Hopefully, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like two or three months. Nice. So, you know, that's what I'm hoping for at least. For people to find out when it's ready, uh, the best place to go, you're going to be announcing it on your Facebook because I know you're really active there. Yeah, definitely on Facebook. I'll, I'll talk about it probably on Instagram. Hopefully I'll be, you know, I, I don't, I mean, I have a website, but I'm very low tech, no tech. I don't know much about how to update it or put stuff on there. So I got a buddy that kind of is doing that. So I'll have to talk with him. 
Gotcha. But mainly Facebook. Facebook and Instagram is where you can find out most stuff about what's going on as far as that goes. And Perfect. Instagram, Dave, and my Instagram is just at David Pastorius. Very cool. Uh, and Twitter I have, but I'm never on Twitter. I don't really mess with that one much. Bass players get their voice using kind of the, the combination. It, it all kind of boils back to the gear you're using as well. So mm-hmm. what, what, are your, what are you playing on? A couple of years ago, probably about three years ago, I started, I got endorsed by Marlo, bass guitars. Man, they, those, those guys, are, first off, they're great people. And they make such great product. Yeah, I'm stoked and honored to be playing their stuff, and I'm I'm happy they you know they like me that much. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm playing. I've been playing Marlowe basses, mm-hmm. and this just recently, about two months ago, I pick, I picked up a Phil Jones bass endorsement for bass amps. Gotcha. And they sent me some gear. I I, I played their gear at this NAM conference. and was blown away by them. I mean that their stuff is incredible. So it's an honor to be playing their stuff too. So right now, that's basically what I go to. It's just Marlowe bass, Phil Jones, Phil Jones bass hands. Are you using any pedals particularly, or do you like to go just straight with your sound? I'm not against that. I've never, I've never really used pedals or effects. Not to say I'll never get into any, but I pretty much like just going with the, my normal sound, just my regular sound, as much as possible. I mean, as far as sound, as far as effects. I might use like distortion sometimes, or maybe a little octave phase or a chorus, but that's probably about as far as I see myself going right now. But who knows? What strings are you playing on? Anything particular? Um, right now I've been right now I have um uh, a set of uh, Diodarios on there right now. I don't have no like official official bass string endorsement. I typically look for a Diodario or Ernie Ball. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much the two strings that I normally buy. I find that especially people that. I, and I'll call them purists. I, I tend to stay, I don't really use pedals myself. So it's those subtle things that make a difference when it comes to getting your sound, whether it's the strings you're playing on, you know, if you're going round wound or flat wound, how bright they are. I know a lot mm-hmm. of people, they, they really like playing on newer strings. If you're playing reggae, then dead strings are probably better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it exactly. kind of kind of figuring out where you want to be if you want to be kind of thumpy and, 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 and lumpy or, or bright and crisp. Also with the gauges, because with more of the funky stuff, some people might go with, with a lighter gauge if they're snapping. So there's all kinds of ways. It's those subtle things. And even the instruments itself, with a Marlowe bass, you play four string predominantly? Yeah, four string. I have a five string, but predominantly four string. Yeah, and I and I use lighter gauge strings, and I like I like you know like that sound when they're about three three weeks worn in, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like still kind of they got some of the snap, but they're not totally brand new and like clinky sounding. But you know I'm, I have a very mid rangey kind of sound. It's kind of the sweet spot that you're that you're looking yeah. for there. Exactly, but it's funny on the stuff I'm recording now. I'm finding myself doing like you know the palm thing to get that like upright sound on some stuff and then slapping. So it, it, it's kind of cool to be able to do that in the studio. Trying to, you know, you get to explore more of your sound in the studio. Probably lastly, looking ahead, cause I know you're with you being at the studio right now, busy with the recording. Do you have any kind of more long-term plans of, of projects you'd like to be working on or things that you're, you're thinking of doing? I'm looking to, well, you know, I want to I want to get local 518 out playing more. That's that's my band. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really enjoy doing that. I enjoy playing with Pat. And open to playing with you know whatever comes my way, kind of. You know what I mean? Trying to keep all doors open. You know, keep options open as much as I can. But or, or at least just have a lot of different things going on. You know, it's great to be able to say I'm too busy to do that. You know what I mean? To say I can't do that. So it's better to have more options than less. So that's why I'm just trying to keep busy doing different things all the time. Absolutely. I think that one of the common things for most players is the, the constant state of the hustle where you're, you're juggling all of, all of the things. And I've talked to a few people that have found themselves at a point. One guy I was talking to said he, he made a kind of his, his rule of thumb was to never say no to anybody. But then mm-hmm. he found himself just getting way overwhelmed with too yeah. many too many projects and too many things that it was just like, okay, I need to back off because this is just too much. Well, yeah, it's like, it's like keep your options open, never say no as long as you're not crossing anybody that you made a promise to 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I around town growing up, I remember the musicians that would like bail on a gig for a more higher paying gig at the last minute. And you can't do stuff like that. You know, that's one thing. Your word is everything. So, I hear you know, you. Once you commit, you gotta come through with that. At least then. Yeah, keep your options open and your doors open as long as you're not uh, you know, letting anybody else down with what you promised them. Very sound advice. There's actually quite a few books on on being a successful player a lot of them are centered out of new york city because they really have to hustle to stay Mm -hmm. busy because there's so many really good bass players in 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 new york that's what i've learned after the more and more playing like going to nashville going to new york city and it was like man there's a million guys that can play the part but at the end of the day it's like do do they want to hang out with you or not so it's more about like are you a decent cool person that's a big part of the game yeah. Or in Nashville, one there was a guitar player that told me it's it's about the twenty three hours off stage. Totally. One hour on. You know, as long as you can play the part, hey, there's always somebody that can play the part. Hey, there's more than that. <laughs> I've tried to learn that in the past few years. Since, you know. <laughs> Good attitude is everything, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Well, David, we appreciate you taking time from the studio. I know you had to step outside into the parking lot. We don't want you to get too sunburned while you're out here chatting. Folks, oh, no, I'm good. make sure that we stay on top of new album. Should be out hopefully in the next couple of months. Keep an eye on davidpastorius.com. But more importantly, David's Facebook page. That's where probably the most rapid flow of information is going to be coming. Yeah. Again, thanks so much for taking time to chat with us, David. You've seen him thanks. here. David Pastorius on Bass Musician Magazine. Thanks for basing out with us here on BassMusicianMagazine.com.